express my eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. I don't know, Suzanne. Has anybody else been trying to fix this computer? No. Since you installed the system here and in Paris, you're the only one who has access. All right. Uh, let me try something here, then. There. Satellite link. Ah, Professor Williams. I see you're making progress. Yes, Mr. Addington. There's definitely a virus. It's locked out the alpha system, but fortunately it hasn't gotten to any of the files. How the hell did that happen? Well, you're in contact with so many different international systems, it's difficult to say. I've debugged it for now, but I'd like to install a permanent antiviral program. Well, do, do whatever you have to. Fine. I'll be uh, back in the morning to set it up. I'd stay now, but it's my daughter's birthday today. Oh, yeah. Well, say no more. Give her a hug for me. I will. Peter, I'd like you to meet Professor Williams. Aha, the man who's made it possible for us to track down anybody at any time, <laughs> including me. Thank I'll you. see you tomorrow, Suzanne. I'll see you out. Good night. Good night. By the way, how did it all go? Well, I delivered the Forsyth papers per your instructions, sir. Oh, very good. Good work. You're looking awfully dapper tonight. Where are you, where are you, where are you off to? Another charity dinner? No, sir. Traviata at the Mat. No one intriguing in the chorus, no doubt? As she's a uh, rather attractive first violin. Good night, Peter. Good night, sir. Hello? Suzanne, it's Yvonne Williams. Hello, Mrs. Williams. How are you? Is Robert still there? No, he left some time ago. Is something wrong? He hasn't arrived yet. He said he was going right home. How long ago did he leave? Uh, about two hours ago. Oh, I see. Well, perhaps he missed his train. Thank you. Okay, bye. Joe. Peter. Ah, uh -huh. you're up late. You're back early. Not that early, Susie. Peter, Professor Williams. He never arrived home. Mrs. Williams called me twice, and she's notified the police. I promised you'd be over as soon as you got back. <laughs> Thanks, Susie.
this is rule book of current subjects, and the university will have a complete list of all of his students. Mrs. Williams, Peter Sinclair. I work for Alexander Ellingson. Chief said you were coming. If there's anything else at all, Mrs. Williams, please call me right away. So what can you tell me? Well, the guy has been gone for all evening yet. Who knows? Maybe he's got a girlfriend. Maybe he stopped for a drink, had one too many. I mean, he has to have a schedule. Maybe he needed to unwind. Hmm. I think we're dealing with more than an errant husband. Now, Professor Williams was involved in a very important project for my boss. And I understand that we're dealing with a model of propriety. All right. Normally with an adult, we leave at 48 hours. Most people show up, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know. But in this case, I'll write a standard check. Hospital, jail, more. Good. Thank you. Mrs. Williams, try not to be overly alarmed. There's normally a perfectly good explanation. Mr. Sinclair, Robert would not have just gone off like this. No, no, I'm sure. Have you had any unusual phone calls recently? Any visitors? No, nothing. Nothing out of the ordinary? Nothing. Does he have any enemies? Financial problems? Have you two been fighting? No, no, no. Uh... gun wasn't even loaded. Forgive us for frightening you, but you must believe that we will not do anything to harm you. Please, let me call my wife. It's too dangerous. We will call her for you. It's not that we do not trust you, but you might inadvertently say something that could jeopardize everything. Jeopardize what? There are people with economic interests in our country who would not stop at anything to get what they want. Your death is their top priority. My death? Why? Sasa, Ndio, Polisana, Tukonayapa. He has grown worse. They do not expect him to survive the night. All right. I'm, I'm taking about as much as I can handle here. You say you're not going to hurt me. You're not asking for ransom, but you keep talking about they and, and, and this he. Who the hell are they and who the hell is he? I demand to know what's going on here. Very well. You'll need to know soon enough. We are from the Ebro tribe of Burkina Faso. Does that mean anything to you? Well, I know it's in Africa. Ebro is your tribe. It's the tribe of your ancestors. <laughs> My family hasn't been in Africa for four generations. That's true. Your father and his father's father, and even his father before him, were not born on the continent. Nevertheless, they were of royal blood. Royal blood? Yes. And it is our law that only males may ascend to the throne. What exactly are you saying here? Our monarch. His Royal Highness Mabundi is very ill. Unless there is a medical miracle, by tomorrow morning, you will be king. Yes? Your husband is safe. Please do not worry and do not contact the police. We'll be in touch again soon. God, he's been kidnapped. Do you recognize the voice? No. The accent? African, I think. Yeah, I think so, too.
Williams? Yes. Well done, guys. Thank you, Beaumont. How'd you Luke do? Brenner. Hi. Would you like to come in? I'll get the gear. I'll give you a hand. May I get you some coffee or some tea? A coffee would be fine. Thank you. Okay. I'm Nikki. What's your name? Lisa. Lisa. That's a pretty name. What are you drawing? Pictures. These are beautiful pictures. Sugar? No, thank you. Mrs. Williams. I know it is difficult, but please try to relax. I am just so worried. I can't imagine where he could be. You want the lady. What? What are you saying? A lady in a long dress and a funny hat. Lisa, baby. She has such a vivid imagination, and all of this has upset her. But I saw them. You saw some people taking your daddy away? Lisa. Why didn't you tell me this before? Mrs. Williams, if she did see something, she probably didn't realize what was happening. Oh, Peter. Can you show us where you saw them? took your daddy here? In the car. You remember what color the car was? What did they look like, honey? They were black. Mrs. Williams, under the circumstances, I think it'd be a good idea if you and Lisa spent a few days at the Allington townhouse. We'll just get our things together. Come with mommy, Lisa. Nikki, I think we'll leave Luke here. Yeah. Great. Ooh. You're right. Oh. oh my God! Look at these. Uh -huh. Interesting. Come on. You're right. Yeah. Can I wear my party shoes? Sure, honey. But we have to hurry. These can belong to anybody. Yeah, you're probably right. Well, we'll photograph them anyway, and then we'll have Susie cross-reference them in the computer. I'm sure she'll think of something. Right. Doesn't anybody knock around? Thank you. Now perhaps we can talk. Look, I don't know who you guys are looking for, but I swear to God, man, you got the wrong guy. What you doing here? Who are you working for? What does it look like? I'm with the phone company. 
Working for the gas company? All right, Mr. Gasman, you're coming for a ride. Little gas, we going on a picnic? No, you're right, Peter. The beads are undoubtedly African. I have friends in the uh, Gambian and Kenyan embassies. I'm sure they'll be able to identify them. Thank you very much, sir. Right, I'll, I'll call you when I hear from them. Okay. Out. I have the voice recordings. Do you know how many African dialects there are? Yeah, give or take a hundred. Mrs. Williams, does your husband have any dealings with Africa or Africans? No, he's never been there. And as far as I know, he doesn't even have any African students. Mm -hmm. I would like you to listen to this tape. See if you can identify the accent of the man who called. Okay. Thank you. Right, I think I'll go over to the house and relieve Luke. Okay. Oh. Yes, sir. That's very pretty. Can I have a look at it a minute? Hmm. Lots of wonderful colours, aren't they? Vicky. as though you put up quite a struggle. Yeah, I'm on my way back. There's more going on here than meets the eye. Listen. My associates can continue with their approach to this situation. But I'm a reasonable man. And if you cooperate with us, we can make it worth your while. So, where is Professor Williams? Come on, man. If I tell you what you want to know, what's going to stop you from putting a bullet between my eyes? Because we're not interested in you. All we want is Williams. There's enough money in the gold and minerals for all of us. Okay. I can get you, Professor Williams. I'm sure you'll find it in the computer. Okay, these are the most up-to-date maps of Africa you can get. Peter, Mrs. Williams has identified the accent as Diola. Mm -hmm. And that dialect is spoken on the Ivory Coast, Let's go. Benin, Burkina Faso, Niger, Ghana, and Togo. Ghana and Togo. Yep, all of them here on the western tier of the continent. Satellite link. Peter, Nikki, uh, I've got something. That drawing you sent? Look at this. That's the uh, ceremonial dress worn by several tribes in Africa, specifically Liberia, the Ivory Coast and Burkina Faso. Well, that's interesting. The dialect that we've identified is spoken in two of those countries. Yeah, but there's more. The carved beads are indigenous to 
Togo, Burkina Faso, and parts of the Cameroon. Okay, well, that makes Burkina Faso the common link. JJ, mm -hmm. nip downstairs to the library, get the encyclopedia. Susie, access the wire services for Burkina Faso. Sir, what else do you know about this country? Not much. It's a tiny nation in turmoil. However, the largest manganese deposits in the face of the earth can be found there. Mr. Addington, you said that the clothes were ceremonial. What type of ceremonies? Births, weddings, deaths. Any word on Luke? No, sir. But we'll keep you posted. What I don't understand is why they came back. If they already had the professor. Why did they take Luke? So he couldn't identify them. They were probably after Mrs. Williams and Lisa. No, I don't think so. You see, we know that Lisa saw them. Which means both she and her mother were at home. The kidnappers could just as easily have taken both of them at the same time. Yeah, you're right. And the man who called, the kidnapper. I mean, there have been absolutely no demands for ransom. And there was no hostility whatsoever in his voice. Luke, on the other hand, appears to have come upon something completely different. Here it is, Peter. Nikki? Kino Faso. There we are. Originally French. Been at the mercy of one military coup after another since its independence in 1960. Seems to have a number of native tribes, mostly monarchies. Peter, look over here. These clothes and beads are from the Ebro tribe. Okay, Susie, then cross reference Burkina Faso with Ebro. Adding some residents. Yeah, it's me. Give me the big guy. Luke, where are you? Excuse me. Hi, buddy. Talk to me. Don't ask any questions. Just do what I tell you. Now listen. They know that we got the professor. Yes, and we're willing to make a deal. Who are you? That's not important. Let's say I represent some business interests who can be very generous. Yeah, yeah, I'm listening. Riverside Park, midnight, at the gazebo. Oh, and bring the professor. What's he worth to you? 100,000. Our man and 215, you got yourself a deal. Done. You talked to the kidnappers. What did they say? They're holding Luke. But they don't have your husband. They think we do. I don't understand. I'm afraid I don't either. But it seems, everybody, as though we're dealing with two sets of kidnappers. Peter, look at this. Put it on the screen, Susie. King Mabundi dead, no heir apparent. King Mabundi of Burkina Faso's Ebro tribe died last night. Foul play is suspected. Warring factions fought to gain control. The tribe's valuable mineral and gold resources. That looks a lot like Professor Williams. Yes. The resemblance is remarkable. Everything is arranged. We we'll leave tomorrow. Leave? I can't just pick up and leave. I thought you understood. Understood what? That suddenly I'm a prisoner just because your people need a king? Your people? No, my ancestors. I'm American now. I've worked hard to get where I am today. You have a responsibility to your tribe. I have a responsibility to my family. Let me call my wife, please. When you are settled, we will come for your wife and child. All right. As your king, I command you to let me go. I'm sorry, your highness, but we cannot do that. Besides, if you stay, you will surely get killed. By you, Baganda? I would gladly lay down my life for you. But there are those who care more about money than the well-being of our people. Those that are probably responsible for the death of our king. Are you saying that your king was assassinated? There is no doubt that he was poisoned. Why? 
The Ebro lands are rich in manganese deposits. However, we are an agricultural and hunting society. We have no desire to develop these resources or change our lifestyle. But there are those who would benefit greatly from the sale of those resources. Look, I understand your plight. And, and I'll make an appeal to my government to help your people, but... That takes months. We need a leader now. And if I refuse to go? We have faced that eventuality. I absolutely refuse to participate in this charade. Nicky, we have no choice. Luke Cruz is brilliant, but he's backed us into a corner. We've no option and no time. And whose fault is that? You agreed to meet them tonight. Of course I did. The sooner we find out who wants the professor, the better our chances are of stopping the people who really have him and of getting Luke back in one piece. Nikki, you're the wrong sex and the wrong color. There is only one way. And I'm in. <clears throat> hey, JJ. You're pretty good there in my clothes, huh? Oh, besides the waist being a little loose. No, I have none of that. <laughs> you are both absolutely crazy. Something could go wrong. It's not his job, Peter. It's too risky. Look, Nikki, flying a plane isn't exactly clerical work. Besides, Luke's in trouble. And I want to help. Nikki? Okay. And here's the plan. Shut up. Tie his hands behind his back. Hey. Hey, what are you guys doing? It looks like you're getting ready for World War III. I thought we had a deal. It's an insurance policy. In case your partner doesn't hold up his end of the bargain. You're going to be well covered, JJ. Your part's only going to take a few seconds. And remember, it's plenty dark out there. How dark? Well, you've flown blind through the night hundreds of times. Yeah, I got it. It's like flying into O'Hare on a foggy night in the middle of December, right? Exactly. And that's yours. JJ, put that in your pocket and put your mic in there. And I think you might need that. It's not my bag, I'll uh, leave that to you guys. There's the gazebo. JJ, you stay right here. Nikki, we've got 15 minutes. Okay.
लिखी Everything is ready. I would like you to try this on, Your Highness. Perhaps you'd like to speak to your wife. Are you all right? Yes. Don't worry, sweetheart. I'm fine. These people will not harm me. I'm sorry. Your husband has to leave now. We'll be in touch soon. Robert! Robert! Who the hell are these people? We don't know, but they must have the same interests we do. Brilliant. Tell me something I don't know. These people get away with Williams, it's all over. Why? We can kill him anywhere. Of course we can't. The media get a hold of this, we are all dead in the water. Yes. Yes, General. Of course. Uh, right away, sir. Thank God for that. Thank you. <laughs> Baganda's booked passage on a ship called the Ibadan, and it sails today. But how did the general find out? Because Baganda's aides are of more help to us than to him. Now you stay, because the rest of us have got work to do. Okay. Trace the call to a cellular phone. The problem is it's registered with a uh, rental company. They won't give me any information on it. What do you got? Come in, listen. I'm fine. These people will 
about Harvey. You sound in the background? Yeah, a deep rumbling sound. Sounds like some kind of I'm diesel. Sorry. Your husband has to leave. Go back for a second. We'll be in touch soon. Yes, don't worry, sweetheart. I'm fine. Yeah, it sounds like the diesel of a truck or a train or tugboat. I'm sorry. there in the background of that first call. It's been bugging me since then. Shipping. Yeah, shipping, that's not so stupid. Yeah, Susie, can you get me a list of all the shipping movements for today? Three departures today. The SS Miao is sailed for Greece this morning at 0700. The SS Constitution is leaving for the Caribbean at 1100, and the Ibidin leaves for Morocco and the Ivory Coast at 1600. Okay, it sounds like the place to start. Take you home, Professor. Kill me if you wish, but the king must return to his homeland. The king.
What's this other faction? They represent the military and very big business. For them, kingdoms are cancers that have to be wiped out. They must be stopped immediately. Yeah, I get the picture. It's your call, Professor. You're staying or going? Very few people get the opportunity to look into their past and discover they can help shape the future of a country. It's an opportunity I don't want to miss. But I must see my wife and child before I leave. Of course, yes, Your Majesty. All right, gentlemen, you stay here. Keep out of sight of the windows, keep the doors locked. You, come with me. Wait right here. I will go with you to help you set up a different system. And one that isn't based on blood or male dominance, for that matter. But one that's based on the abilities of the person that you choose to lead you. And the will of the people. Our people. Wisdom. Even King Solomon would have been proud of your majesty. Professor Williams is on the line, sir. Oh, good. Satellite link. Alexander. Robert. How goes life with you? I'm pleased to report much better. It took a lot of convincing, but democracy is tentatively rearing its head. We've got a lot more work to do, but at least now we'll have an elected king. And who might that be? Modibo Baganda, the best man for the job. Excellent. How's your wife and daughter? Oh, they're just fine, thank you. But I'm afraid my daughter Lisa liked being an honest-to-goodness princess so much, she's uh, reluctant to come home. <laughs> Don't blame her. Anyway, she's got a hell of a lot to tell the kids. You know, there's a great tradition of royalty in my family, sir. Really? Oh, yes. Didn't know that. Oh, absolutely, sir. My great-grandfather was in service to Prince Albert. Really? Yes. And then, of course, way back, I mean, generations back, I had an uncle who was in the court of King Henry VIII. <laughs> Extraordinary. This doesn't happen to go all the way back to King Arthur, does it? It's a very proud tradition, sir. Uh, each generation must transform its knowledge of the past into the promise of the future. 